Hey guys, it's Danny. Today we are going to focus on this little orchid which needs a little bit of assistance. Lately I've been on a spree of maintenance, been looking at some of my orchids, some of them need some maintenance and it's a great opportunity to actually film some of the more interesting cases and yeah, exemplify things that can happen while you are growing orchids. Very common questions some people might address and so on and so forth. So today I will be repotting this orchid due to something that I saw in the medium, but oh no, it has a flower spike. Should we go ahead and repot it? Should we not? Why should we not repot it if it has a flower spike, which is a very, very popular advice to give and so on and so forth. Don't forget to give this video a like if you end up enjoying it and why not subscribe? I post multiple times a week and it's completely free. But if you're feeling extra about it, consider further supporting my channel by either becoming a member, checking out the merch, using the affiliate links down below or the super thanks option down below. Right, before we start though, I wanna address a funny comment that I got recently, which was saying, oh my goodness, Danny, what's happening with your orchids? They seem to all be like doing bad and you need to save them all the time well the thing is and i think i said this before i tend to focus on sick orchids because they're the most interesting other than a spotlight what else do we want to learn about this orchid in the spotlight i'm gonna tell you the basic care in addition to the beginner tutorial that i always have linked in the description on oncidiums so other than describing that it's fragrant and some details about its growth there isn't much to really talk about with this orchid it does need intervention it doesn't need repotting. Well, it will soon because, oh my goodness, I will take you along for the repotting of this one. It doesn't really need anything. So there's no point in me doing anything to it for the sake of a video because it's not going to help anybody talking about a healthy orchid. Usually people start to Google, oh, what is wrong with my orchid? Why do I have yellow leaves? Why do I have dying roots and so on and so forth? They're not going to Google, oh, well, why is my orchid healthy? You know, so making videos on healthy orchids, not the most sought after videos, I will have to say, other than the tutorials, which I've already made. And I, you know, it's not the time to redo them just yet. They're still good quality. So yeah, on something like this, there's no point to focus on. So it's not gonna take up a 15 minute video, you know, but something like this will, because this can actually help some people that might have some questions, righty. So. That's a let's get to work. Okay, so the reason why I need to repot this orchid is because, first of all, I have noticed visible signs that this orchid is stressed and it's easy to tell. Do we see this is an older leaf? It is quite a large leaf compared to an older leaf, but this is the newer leaf. And it's definitely not the same size. It's already done growing. I can see the abscission line. And once we see the abscission line, we know that the leaf is fully grown. So from the get-go, we can tell that a brand new leaf that is tinier is not a good sign. Also take a look at how curved this leaf is. This is a sign of dehydration actually. When leaves are not fully opened or present some deformities, it's usually a sign of either dehydration either some pests, but thrips would not do this. Thrips would create indentations, actual indentations. I might actually be able to show you on the screen right now because I have some old damage, not this. This is created by not enough water in the leaf to straighten it out as it was forming and hardening. And I can tell you that indeed that was the case. This orchid got very dehydrated for no good reason. I was watering it enough and I do see there aren't way too many good roots in this pot. I do have some roots that I need to cut away because they're not alive anymore. So those were the visual signs, visual cues that over the past year I have noticed about it and have made me think that something might be wrong. Now here's the worst part in the pot. We have a lot of algae, which I personally believe and I'm convinced of it is cyanobacteria. Now, cyanobacteria is not an algae, it's a bacteria which can photosynthesize. And I do notice that in this environment, it's pretty prevalent. Cyano cyanobacteria, oh my goodness. <laughs> cyanobacteria can create byproducts. Oh, rude. <laughs> she just woke up. So cyanobacteria can create byproducts that are toxic and harmful for other plants, roots. I've had bad experiences with it in the past and other orchids. So putting all of these pieces together, I do believe this orchid is highly stressed in the situation it's in. So I do need to intervene sooner rather than later. Is it a 
critical critical condition not necessarily because I do still have roots even in the pot but I'm not entirely sure how long they will last but the problem is we have a flower spike and you might know you might have heard other people or read in articles that it's not a good idea to repot orchids while they're in bloom and it's definitely not the most ideal situation of course but sometimes we can take the risk so let's address a little bit first why it's not a good idea to repot orchids that have flower spikes flower spikes tend to drain a lot of energy from an orchid while the flower spikes grow you might have noticed that the orchid either grows much slower or doesn't grow at all leaves and sometimes roots so what can happen is most probably buds will fall flowers might fall prematurely as well and in very very serious cases in which the roots are completely damaged during repotting we can lose the entire flower spike with phalaenopsis it's usually not the case because they are pretty vigorous plants they can handle repotting very well their roots are not sensitive to small cracks and damages and bruises while repotting we're generally good with phalaenopsis but because of that beautiful flower spike we were all waiting for we tend to postpone repotting to until after the blooms are done now the problem is if the repotting is again a very stressful one for the orchid and after the repotting we notice the orchid starts to droop its leaves it could be that it's running out of energy and it's trying to prioritize that flower spike as well so it's a good idea to just cut the flower spike after repotting if the orchid starts to become droopy and stressed because otherwise if we leave the flower spike be we can stress the orchid to such an extent that it can even be lost and we don't want that those are very extreme cases though they are definitely possible but they are not likely with an orchid that already has at least some good roots generally speaking though repotting can be stressful on an orchid even on a phalaenopsis depending on the situation and having that flower spike that stresses it as well doesn't really mesh with repotting generally but sometimes you can get away with it I've gotten away with it almost every time we just gotta be a little careful about it but sometimes you need to be aware that you're just not gonna get away with it so if you can postpone it better postpone it until all flowers are gone I'm not gonna postpone it because of that cyano in the pot I don't want it there I don't know if this orchid will continue to be healthy being that it's stressed by the medium and now by the flower spike I'd rather give up the flower spike in case this orchid doesn't take the repotting well and that's fine with me we'll see how it goes I'm hoping she will be strong enough to maintain this little very tiny poor flower spike but if she cannot I'm, I'm fine with that I'm prioritizing the health of the orchid here now before we actually start you can actually do something if you feel that you absolutely need to repot your orchid and you don't care at all about the flower spike the safest absolute safest thing to do is to cut the flower spike and then repot the orchid I'm not gonna do it but I will assess the orchid further on if I see signs of extra stress I'm getting rid of the flower spike I want this orchid to first be healthy and then enjoy the blooms because now she's definitely not happy in this condition oh shoot I managed to put coffee <laughs> on my sleeve that's why I don't wear light colored stuff especially when I film thumbs up if you're clumsy too I am I can be so clumsy Alrighty you guys, so apparently I did not press the record button and I missed the moment where I actually get it out of the pod but you didn't miss anything. Thank goodness I looked at the viewfinder. So anyway, you didn't lose much. I just pulled out the pod. It was very easy to pull out because I didn't really have many roots. As you can see, I have quite a few roots that I need to remove. This one is not alive anymore. And I can clearly see a lot of algae, some strands of real moss as well. And when you have something green in your pot, actually look close in the light. Sometimes the sphagnum moss can sprout from the dry one, especially if you're not using that compressed brick, which I think, I'm not entirely sure, I just read somewhere that it's heated. So the spores usually don't survive the process, but there are sphagnum moss bags which are fairly loose. Those ones might actually be just dried. So yes, yeah, sometimes you can have actual moss sprouting from the dried one and it can start to grow in the pot. Moss is absolutely fine. You don't need to repot your orchid, but you need to really examine what you have there. Is it cyanobacteria or is it moss? It could be other types of algae as well, which don't pose a threat to your kids. But if it stinks, it's cyano. Typically, that's my guess. So yeah, 
not looking the best. Certainly for an orchid that has been potted in here for a year and a half, not the best. But definitely, yeah, it was time to repot and all of this, ugh, it doesn't smell good, it's cyano. I do have a lot of roots that I need to remove here. So we can visually see them. If we pull on them, they simply come off. If you press on them, they're mushy. They're very clearly not alive anymore. And I don't have too many of them, so this will be very easy. So let's just go ahead and cut all of this mush. Yep, very good idea to intervene. And I do believe I'm not going to upset the flower spike way too much because I didn't have issues pulling the orchid out of the pot. There aren't many roots to begin with, so I will continue to keep an eye on this orchid. I am tempted to just remove the flower spike, but I'll see. I'll see how she does. If I see signs of dehydration, the flower spike will go because this is not a healthy orchid. And I am wondering if the cyano had anything to do with it. Now, if I were to put her back in a transparent pot, I would definitely use hydrogen peroxide to remove all of the cyanospores. However, because I'm gonna use an opaque pot, this is not the pot that I'm gonna use, but I'm just showing you. These are the pots that I use now, typical nursery pots, very, very affordable. So these are the pots that I use. They don't let light go through, which still need light, but they also mean they will not let cyanobacteria form. Hence why I'm using them. Without light, cyanobacteria cannot survive. It cannot produce food, it cannot photosynthesize. So even if I might have some spores here, they're just not gonna develop. So there's no need to disinfect anything. As good as hydrogen peroxide can be, it's always a good idea to remember everything has risks. And the risk with the hydrogen peroxide is that after the reaction, it's just water. And if that water gets trapped, in between the leaves, in the stem, it can cause stem rot, especially on weak orchids. So I'm just going to avoid any type of water anywhere near to the good part of the stem. Just gonna let it be. Cyano will not develop in the new setup, right. So I'm going to get rid of all of this. I will actually wash the tag and be right back with the new setup. Okay, so I will use my typical potting mix, which is sphagnum moss, and then topped with a layer of bark. If you are new to my channel, welcome, first of all. And second, no, this is not too much. I live in a highly, highly, highly warm area, which is warm most of the time. Now it's winter, it's not that warm. It's just 20 degrees Celsius. <laughs> So yeah, there's no real winter here, which is great for me. I don't like low temperatures, but it also means that the potting mixes that I use and the setups that I use need to be a lot more water retentive than you might imagine. I'm trying to put this aerial root inside as well. We're gonna address it, don't worry. So you will see in my videos that I do use setups that are high moisture. This is because I need them to be. Evaporation is an issue here, but it doesn't mean you should use sphagnum moss as well. Start with bark if you're extra, extra new to orchids. And also check this video that I will link you in the description. It explains more. Okay, about that aerial root. I do notice that Phalaenopsis, as long as you maintain things airy, <laughs> I know, is this airy? It is. So as long as you maintain things airy and not soggy, you can actually convert them to potted roots. And I don't have too many potted roots for this orchid to maintain hydrated. So I'm gonna take my chances with that aerial root and I'm gonna put it in the pot. And I have a funny feeling it's gonna be okay because I did it before multiple times. Alrighty, almost done. Oh, let's add slow release fertilizer. I do mention what I use way down below in the description. Now let's top off with bark chips. And yes, this root snapped a little bit. Again, it's okay. How do I know it's okay? Because I've done it about a million times before. By the way, I'll give it. If you wanna do things right and not in a slight rush, if you ever want to put aerial roots in the pot and they don't fit, they're not flexible, soak them in water first, they will become a little bit more flexible. And you might, might, it's not a guarantee, but you might avoid these snaps. If you have snaps though, again, it's okay. I know some people think it's not, but you know. My experience says it's okay and I'm not gonna lose sleep over it. Alrighty, this pot is super light. I will pour a little bit of water here because the moss was not very, very wet anymore. Where's my tag though? There she is. So now it's January 23. There we go. Hopefully, 
we will not lose the flower spike, but I have a funny suspicion we will not. We're gonna actually do an update on this one when it blooms, and we're also gonna take a look at this root here that I'm trying to acclimate to a potting situation and see if I succeed, see if we have some issues or we won't. Alrighty, so my Philippinensis crust with Fuscara is now potted. I do believe it actually has a name. I'll put it on the tag in the beginning of the video. I'll put a tag with what this orchid is. If I find a different name rather than the cross it is, I'll put it on the tag. I could swear I found a name for it. I think it's registered. All right, so all that's left for me to do is to give it water and then put it on a normal watering regime, watering and fertilizing regime. I don't stop fertilization in the winter or when they have flower spikes or flowers or things of the sorts because typically my orchids are still growing vegetatively to some extent even in the winter. It's still pretty warm here. Yes, it goes cool enough for them to initiate flower spikes but doesn't really stay cool. It's pretty much warm. And in the daytime, particularly with my exposure to the south and west, the grow room gets pretty warm, 25 degrees or so in the daytime. So they still continue to grow vegetatively and I need to support that growth with fertilizer. I also added slow release fertilizer in the pot so they will be fertilized whether I use water soluble fertilizer or not. But I usually like to offer both types of fertilizers because they are heavy feeders. And that is about it for this orchid. I will actually do something in the following days or weeks. I will do some shorts if I need to cut the flower spike or if this root is not acclimating or if the snap, I don't know, gets infected, which I never had happen, but who knows. I will keep you up to date with some shorts telling you what has happened. And I think we're gonna see it again when it's in bloom, if I'm gonna keep the flower spike. I really hope so because it has really nice flowers, but right now I just want the circuit to be healthy again, pretty much. And that is about it, time to end. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you've enjoyed today's video and you learned something new. Subscribe for more videos. And if you're into aquariums, check out my second channel. You will find it linked in the description below if you scroll down a little bit. And with that said, I'll see you all next time. Bye. Thank you.